Hi there YouTube, Extreme Trains here. So in this video we're going to be taking a look at a set which I swore I was not going to get because it was too expensive. And then I decided to pay way more than recommended retail price to get it. So this is the uh, Thomas Wood Busy Island set. Let's do it. Here it is, the Thomas Wood Busy Island set, and you can see it's huge! So, uh, let's get started. I wanted to talk about, very briefly, the box it came packed in, um, and it actually came packed in this box here. So, this must be the box that gets sent to retailers, I assume, um, as a packing box, and that is what they get it in, and I got sent that, so you can see it's got that. I just thought it had some nice... Things on it. It's got some cute little logos here. I really like these logos actually. They're quite fun. You can see the windmill and that kind of thing. Come around to the back. You can see the kind of the wrappings that have some of the paperwork in it, but you can see that there. Uh, and then again, we have more codes and stuff on the side. So that is that. I want to show everyone that very briefly, uh, but it's not the most important part, obviously. What is important is this huge, ginormous thing here. So what we're going to do is come to the wide camera so I can get a little bit closer, which is good. Uh, so you can see here, very classic Thomas Wood on the front. I think this though is a much better design than all the other ones. It's really busy, it's really exciting. Uh, it looks like a lot of fun and I think that's good. And the one thing I will applaud uh, you know, Mattel for doing here is if you look at some other railway brands on the packaging on the front of the box, they don't show the whole layout. They show like a bit of it or they show it not assembled correctly so that it looks like there's more track or it looks like the way it's set up is not reflective of what it actually looks like. This one at least, it is a CGI picture, but you can see that it, the layout has been assembled as it's designed. So what you see here is what you get. Uh, we also get this nice little window here, which has our special edition Thomas, as well as that coach and that truck and all the other random bits and bobs. 40 plus pieces, four animals. Wow, how exciting. You get that little picture down the bottom there. Come around to the side and we get a bit of a profile shot and then here we go, back of the box here. If you want to read the text, um, go for it. Uh, again, it's a little bit wild. Um, you can see we get a bit of an exploration of the features uh, and then we get that nice picture design here of that set, but it actually makes literally no sense. And then we come down to the money shot. Uh, 44 play pieces, it says. Mmm, but we get... Okay, they've actually counted each of these as one, I think. Like, as in it's one of each, so that only counts as one. So that's nice, I suppose. Um, you can see, yeah, what well, the other pieces we get. Again, not actually that much track. We only get six pieces of straight track and six pieces of curved track normal. Um, but it is good to see that we're getting lots of switches. We get a couple of cool, like a bridge piece, which is nice. We get the Soto Airport piece, which is nice. We get some of these curved pieces, which are nice. And we also get the station, which I'm really excited to take a look at. Um, yeah, so you can see this is what the box looks like. So far, so interesting. Let's crack it open and take a look at what's inside. Now, if you've watched my Thomas Wood Over video, uh, you would have seen that I don't like it when companies use sustainability to uh, push a new product when it's actually, you know, like you can make things that are sustainable um, without making them inferior. And we already know that's definitely true. Uh, and I don't really like that they use that kind of to explain why they were going for the no painted look. Uh, and this is again, so Mattel says they're going for a sustainable product. And then there's all this internal packaging. Yes, it is cardboard, although you can see here there's a lot of these rubber bands holding things together, which are plastic, which is a big no from me. But why? Like, why did we need this much internal packaging for this set? It just seems to me like this is super excessive. Like, I don't know. It, you know, this, I understand, maybe to some extent, if you're wanting to have a display window. But this track, like, why does it need to be in this thing separate? Why can't it all be together? I, I really don't understand. So, to me, this is a bit of a frustration. Uh, you say your product is sustainable, and that's why you've done this big redesign, blah, 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 and then you package things like this. But anyway, I'm going to keep going over the unboxing and try and get all these pieces out. Okay, uh, slightly more credit where credit's due. There was very little use of uh, the plastic things, so these rubber bands and stuff. The rest was all, I think, actually quite cleverly done cardboard. So while I'm not super happy that there was so much cardboard, um, 
you know, at least the way they did use it, I think was pretty clever in like packaging the bits and pieces together. So there are a lot of pieces to this set. Let's take a really brief look at all of them in a bit of detail. So these are the curved pieces, seen them before, don't talk about them. There are a bunch of straight pieces, seen them before, don't even talk about them. Uh, let's just go with what's in front of me. So we've got this bridge piece here. This is meant to be the Vickerstown Bridge. Um, not a bad piece, although again, a lot of plastic. You can see the bit of wood, I'll oh, come in a bit closer for this. Um, the bit of wood they have given us here is just this this, this handle thing. Um, and the way it works is it sits flat and then it like lifts up and kind of stays. It's, it's kind of weird. So it, it, there's a, it wants to stay down and then there's like a friction thing that lets it open. So it can just open freely, but there's like a bit of friction here to bring it up. So. Yeah, look, it's fine. There's a bit of crab printing detail there, but you know, it is what it is. Um, the next thing we've got here is the Vickerstown Ferry. Uh, unclear if this is actually a real thing. And again, I think the wood, the wood on this looks really cheap and nasty just because of the way it's done. So um, this having the chimney here, I think just looks really strange. Uh, you can see it's designed so that a train can roll into it and we will see that in the completed set. Uh, and it's also got these little spots for the people to sit. Uh, let's just grab a person for demonstration. So the people can just sit in the top here, which I think looks super weird. Um, but the one thing I will say is that these actually have a clip, so the people don't fall out, uh, which is one of the complaints I had about the carriages and stuff, is the people just kind of sat there and they didn't really stay in very securely, whereas on this, they actually kind of wedge in quite nicely. So I'm, I'm glad to report that something has been improved on this weird system. Um, here are the riser pieces. We've seen them before. We're going to talk about those monstrosities. Uh, we get this little bridgey thing. Um, it's the animal park, I believe. Nothing super special to write home about. And again, just a little bit of wood is there. Unfortunately, it's hollow and not printed on both sides. So that is a little bit neg. Um, we get three of these riser pieces. I think these go up to the station. Um, be interested to see how these kind of work. Um, they don't seem to stack like the old Thomas Wooden Railway ones did. So that's unfortunate. Uh, we get this picnic table. Okay, it's camera doesn't want to focus, does it? Yep, so you see that. Again, it's the classic what they've done is to try to dress up the very clearly, very plastic uh, thing with a little tiny piece of wood on top. Um, and again, the people don't really secure into this one. They can very easily just kind of wobble around and fall out. Uh, you get two of these. And they're the same. Yes, they are the same. Um, so they've got this, the, the, the track. You've got a little pen here with a feeding trough and you've got this printing here uh, again with the Animal Park logo and the zebra stripes on it. So you get two of those which are kind of interesting I guess. Uh, you get one of these trees. Cool. Again, weird that you get the plastic. The, the tree at least part is wood but the actual leaves are plastic so that is a bit unfortunate. Uh, you get, as I said, uh, two sets of points, and you can see you get the gray set. These ones, interestingly enough, have this railing on the side, um, but they operate pretty much the same as the uh, points we've seen previously. And you also get a black set, which you can see up the back there. We get Jeremy in this set. Uh, he's a very naff, if you ask me. Uh, I think the face and everything is it's fine. Um, Although it doesn't really reflect what he looks like because his eyes, the way the curves is done here, it should be more rounded, like, like a cone rather than this. So that's why his face looks a bit naff. Um, I think the details on the tail are fine, but they're obviously very chunky. The wings are done okay. Um, it's weird that he's been given Thomas Wooden Railway wheels like this. Like this is just a troublesome truck chassis. Literally just bolted on the bottom. Uh, and he's got spots for two people. And again, at least uh, he does have those same clips as the ferry. So... To, People aren't going to fall out. So look, I think that's good. And I think from, from a play perspective, that's really important, especially for a plane, because you're going to be wanting to swoosh it around. And he's very swooshable. Um, that's, I guess, good. Uh, so that is something that you'd want to think about. And I'm glad that we've got those clips there to make that a bit more functional. Next is the Sodor Airport piece. Um, yeah, not much to say here. Just a plastic thing. We've got a little bit of, again, some token wood. They really like making wood poles, and the roof here is wood with this little dish on it, which is meant to be off-center, um, and you can take off the lid. It's got a seat with a tiny bit of detail in it. Um, is this one? No. So this is one of those seats that doesn't have a clip, so they just kind of wobble around. And again, I think that's quite silly, because it is designed so that you can spin it around, so that the person inside can see, I assume. But 
it wobbles, so the person is going to fall over and fall out of those things. So that's a bit silly, um, although I like this little logo we've got here of Soto Airport with Jeremy. But also it just shows what shape he's supposed to be versus the actual shape that the koi is, so hmm, embarrassing. Uh, and probably the most interesting piece in this thing is the Vickers Town, and you can see it's very reminiscent of what they did with Knapford. Um, so you've got two levels, you've got this little level down the bottom here. I can't see on the camera. Level down the bottom here. Um, and then there's actually a set of points in here, which takes you off to this gap, which is where the ferry docks. So, you know, interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit wild. And then you can see we've got this top level up here um, with those warning stripes on it. So it doesn't really look that much like a station except for the thing, but you know, I can see what they were trying to do. Uh, and then you do have this function here with the little lift. So you can push that up and it does kind of click so once it goes up to the top, it will actually stay there. So it's not going to fall down. And then once you bring it down, it'll just fall back down to the ground. Again, um, you can see the mechanism here. It's okay. It's a little bit naff. I don't love it. You can hear it's a bit kind of crunchy. Um, but again, the biggest problem is that, you know, that it just, it's open. And if you put a person in there, so if we try and it's very hard, to, I don't know how you're supposed to get a person in here. It's very awkward to do that. Um, I have big fingers, obviously, but, you know, if you pull him up, he just kind of falls out when he gets to the top. So I, I think it is a bit silly that there's no, it's not, there's no, like, Lego where there's, like, a little stud you could click him in. Um, the same as if we put him down to the bottom, watch. Oh, here you go. He stands up down the bottom, but I think that's just because he's, yes, his head was hitting the top of the building. So functionality-wise, not so great. Uh, lastly, to look at are these characters. So... We do get a unique and exclusive to this set version of Thomas. Um, he looked like his normal self. He's got the, it's obviously the airport opening or something. You can see he's got that logo again with the banners. Um, that's just your standard Thomas Wood Thomas. But it is interesting that they do say Busy Island Thomas on the bottom. We get this coach. So this is a redeco of the, or repaint of the express coach. So it's the same detailing and stuff. Um... But we've got that little banner on the side. And again, you get that busy island passenger coach. Interesting. I don't know what this coach is. Why is it yellow? Like, why isn't this a red branch line coach? Or um, something. Like, there just aren't yellow and orange coaches in the show. I don't know why we didn't paint this into a color scheme. Even, like, the red express coaches. Like, you could have made it white and red. That's a weird color choice to me. I don't know why they did that. Um, we'll come back to the people. You get another one of these kind of animal wagons. Uh, I've talked about them that have that little opening door. Uh, same kind of material and everything. Um, and again, you've just got that printing on the side there, which is the same. Uh, again, nothing to secure the actual animals in there. So I think it's a bit naff. Uh, in terms of that controller, so top and hat, weirdo things. Uh, this one I think is just a standard one by the looks of it. It's just a standard to top and hat. We get a uh, pilot. Again, she looks all right, but they're all kind of weird. Uh, we get another person here who's an animal park worker. If I can get them out. Ugh. Wild, hey. Um, you get an animal person. Again, in the, the two poses that exist are like the hands on the chest or the hands in the air. Um, so that's what you get for them. Uh, and then you get a bunch of animals. So you get two of the zebras and they are the same i believe they're the same yeah they look the same to me and you also get two of the giraffes uh the giraffes i must say are kind of cute and look at their little faces hello but then the weirdest part is right the animal park has a picture of an elephant or elephant on the logo we have an elephant on both of the little cages but we don't get any elephants in the set so go figure um the last thing we get is a cargo crate Again, plastic fantastic, how good. Uh, it's for apples, with printing on just the two sides because welcome to Thomas Wood. Uh, and inside you do have some little apples, so I guess that's nice. Um, they are little, they're actually apple, kind of apple shaped and there's green and there's uh, red ones in there. So uh, last thing which we didn't talk about because it's pretty boring are the instructions. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, use these instructions to build this set and we'll come back shortly. All right. Here it is, in all of its glory, the uh, premiere Thomas Wood set ever released, I suppose. Um, and this is it here.
and you can see what it looks like all together. So when it's put all together, um, it's very appealing to look at. There's a lot of fun colors happening. It's very bright. It's, it makes you want to go and like look at it and touch it and play with it. But unfortunately, as has been the case with Thomas Wood, execution is pretty poor. And that's because it's not a fun set to play with. Uh, which sounds crazy because there's so many cool pieces here. There's lots of cool destinations. I'm really excited to build my own custom layouts using the pieces in this set. But the way they're put together and the way they actually work is not very good. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let's explain. So the first thing uh, is that obviously the Thomas Wood track, as we all know, is a bit naff. Uh, it's quite tight around the bends, and we can see that here, you know, when we bring Thomas around, you can feel the friction because of the way, you know, the tightness of those curves. It's not fun. Um, the first problem is that these switches, I don't know what's wrong with them, it just seems to be all of them, are not good, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So, if I bring Thomas around, do, 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 you know, whatever, see how I am making an effort to push Thomas to push Thomas to this side of the track, you know, because I want him to go this way. Um, but he just doesn't want to. He wants to go straight over the middle and do this. And, you know, I'm an adult. I'm pretty careful. I'm being careful. I've switched the points correctly. Um, and it just doesn't, you know, I've really got to be making a conscious effort. If I just push Thomas into this, the points don't do what they're supposed to, which is meant to be make Thomas go this way. He just does this. And that's really annoying because you're a kid, you want to be able to, you know, the point of this is oh, I can switch the points. You switch the points and look what happened. He just goes straight through. Um, so that's really frustrating. In order to make Thomas actually go around the, the curve part of the points, you really need to be pushing the engine into that bend quite with quite a lot of force, which really just is annoying because I shouldn't have to put that much effort to play with my trains. And the problem is if you put any weight on the coach, as you come up the hill, it'll just uncouple because it's so steep. Um, so again, if you, you just, again, if you just, if I, there we go, fourth time's the charm. Oh, I'm getting around the corner. And you can see now the coach is really naff because it's done this. Um, like, why are these hills so steep? There's no reason for it. If they just extended them by a couple of centimeters, perfecto, but nope, so that is annoying. Um, this destination here, the Vickers Town, it's annoying. So the top level, fine, cool, you know, interesting. But if we come down to the bottom level, obviously I'm using the big hands here, uh, you're meant to load up the ferry, as you can see here. You're meant to be able to load it up. Um, you can see pretty quickly a problem with that, though. Uh, when Thomas goes underneath, how do you get to him? How do I get my hand? Like, obviously I have big adult hands. Um, but even as a kid, if I, you know, try and put Thomas on the ferry, it's very awkward to try and reach under there, especially because this ferry is just sitting in here. It doesn't click in or it, doesn't, it just sits. Um, so the problem is, is, is it's very hard to access. And that's even more of a problem because if we actually take a look, it's kind of hard to see on camera, but you can see the points under here. There's no switching mechanism. Not that the switching mechanism actually does anything. Um, but there's just kind of the, you know, there's no switch. Um, so what that means is it actually requires you to kind of finesse Thomas around the bend so that he's kind of going the direction you want him to go. And once he's under there, like, it's really awkward. There you go. I've kind of got it that time. And then he doesn't want to go onto the boat. Oh, because he's derailed. You can see here he's derailed. <laughs> he is hitting the pole. Um, so it's really awkward to get him to actually go around on this. Again, I'm kind of like trying to pull him this way. Oh, he's derailed. Cool. And then you finally get him onto the boat. Cool. We did it. You think? Amazing. But then the way this boat is designed is there's a little indent for the train wheels, but there's not one at the other end. So what happens is he sits here on an angle and you can see that here if we tilt on the side, he's tilting backwards. So when you're just going along, he wants to come out because both wheels aren't secured with that divot. And so what happens is, if we uh, pull this just a little bit further away from the wall here, 
we lift the bridge and there's a there's a lip here and we try and go over it and Thomas falls out. Now is that a feature or a bug? Seems like a bug and it doesn't matter which way you put Thomas in. So if we try this again, you're saying, oh, someone's gonna say, you put it in the wrong way. Okay, put it in the right way. He seems to balance even less well in this way for whatever reason. If we, and he's out. And now he's out. So that's really annoying. Uh, he also doesn't fit if you put a coach or something that just doesn't, it's, that's what it looks like. So cool concept. Once again, executed very poorly. And then if we come here to the animal park, this I think is one of the better executed parts of the set. Obviously, you know, we've got the little animals. They look really nice. You can move this around, put it here, put it here. You can do whatever you want with it. That's kind of cool and fun. Um, you can couple up this, you know, collect your animals, open the little gate. Yay. Um, yep, so that's fine. And again, that's really cool and fun. How fun and cool. Um, but as you can imagine, what do you think is going to happen when we introduce these hills with our little animals? Well, let's find out. So I'm just going to stuff around with these points. Who even cares? They don't work anyway. Let's, uh... Cool. My animal just died. So, yeah, that's cool. Uh, and then we come over here to this side. And the airport doesn't really do anything, neither does Jeremy. He just kind of sits there. But it's, there's not really a place. Is he meant to go like this? It kind of seems like he's meant to go like this, but that's so weird. Um, like this, maybe? I don't know. Very weird. Very weird. So it seems like the way the, this, this set has been designed has meant that it really doesn't execute what it should in the way that it should. And to me, that is really, really, really uh, disappointing because this is meant to be the premier Thomas Wood, or was, was I suppose, uh, playset. And it just doesn't play very well, which I think is a function of the poorly designed Thomas Wood components. Um, it's a poorly designed, you know, the poorly designed steepness of the track, the steepness of the curves, you know, and I think that is really unfortunate. And the last thing is just that even though there's a lot of stuff in this set, it's really not that much track if you think about it. Like you actually, as I said, you only get six pieces of curved track and six pieces of straight track. Um, and obviously, you know, you get these pieces, which are destinations. You get that curve piece over there. You get the bridge, you get the big shed here, you get those switches, but it really isn't a lot of actual train track. And I think Again, it kind of feels like that this set has gone a bit like Trackmaster 2 uh, on us in that they've focused so much on trying to build in all these gimmicks, they've forgotten that kids just want a long piece of track so they can couple up a long train of troublesome trucks to Thomas and have a big crash. Uh, that's what I wanted to do as a kid, and I think a lot of kids also want to do that. And you just really can't do that. There's just not enough space in any of these destinations to have a really long, big train. Um which is, I think is really unfortunate. So that is kind of my thoughts on the functionality of the set. Let's now finally talk about final thoughts and a price. Okay, so uh, what do we think about this set in terms of context and price? So when this set was originally released, uh, it was never released in Australia, as was the case with most of Thomas Wood stuff. Um, but it was available on Amazon. And the price I saw it at, uh, the cheapest price I saw it at was 100 and I think about $50 Australian. So 105, oh sorry, 150 Australian dollars, um, which is quite a lot of money. Um, but, you know, if you thought about that in the context of Thomas Wood, that actually was a pretty good deal, right? Because, you know, the Knapford Station set was retailing for full retail price of 80 Australian dollars. And you definitely get the play value of that Knapford set in this structure here. So that by itself is apparently worth $80. Um, and when you include all the extra destinations and all the extra track and the engines and the coaches, I can see how based on Thomas Wood pricing, this is actually a really good deal in terms of you get quite a lot of stuff. Um, I unfortunately waited because I'm an idiot uh, until Wood Thomas Wood got canceled. This went out of stock on Amazon um, and had to buy it from uh, Trudely Thomas UK. Um, they were very, very helpful in, um, allowing me to be able to purchase this. You can see it's a huge box. It weighs nearly five kilograms. So getting that posted from the UK was insane. But it also meant that I paid um, 
I think it was about about 180 Australian dollars for this set. And then I paid, I think it was about $150 for postage. Uh, I did get a lot of other Thomas stuff as well. Uh, so that's also where I got some Thomas minis and some Thomas truck and art. So it wasn't just that, but that was the thing that made the postage so insanely expensive. Um, and that's the only reason I can do that is because of all you guys on YouTube's excellent support. Um, as you know, I'm not a huge YouTuber, but uh, it does help me uh, being able to, you know, you guys all commenting and watching and liking all my videos means I can afford to sometimes very infrequently splash out and go a bit nuts. And this was one of those times. Um, but yeah, so I paid probably double what recommended retail price was for this in the end. Um, so and I, I absolutely don't recommend it at that price at all. Um, but at the standard Thomas Wood price, um, look, unfortunately, no, I don't think it's worth it. And that is essentially for the reasons that I've just spoken about, that it doesn't play very well. I think separately, all these parts are really cool. I think these riser pieces are cool. Um, you know, these accessories like Jeremy, for example, is cool. I actually even think these things like, yeah, cool, fine. Um, but I just don't think together the set plays well enough to justify that price. I think for a hundred Australian dollars, this would be a really good deal. You do get a lot of stuff. It's a nice big box, you know? Um, but for 150, 60, 70, which was the kind of, I think the recommended retail price in Australia, <sighs> hard sell based on the fact that it doesn't play properly. If it played properly, I think it would actually be relatively okay value, but because it just doesn't play very well, that to me is a huge fail. Um, and that's why as much as you know, I'm sad to see Thomas would go. Um, I'm also not because this is a bad play set because it doesn't play. Uh, and that is a really big fail. So, uh, there are my thoughts on this set. I would love to know what you guys think. I hope you enjoyed, uh, this review. I'm really excited, as I said, to incorporate the parts of this set into another big wood, uh, layout because now, you know, I've kind of got a lot of those cool locations uh, on Sodor. Um, and you know, it's always nice to get that extra track and especially those extra switches. Um, so that's kind of cool. We like that. Um, but yeah, I'm keen to know everyone else's thoughts. Um, if you want to do those cool things on YouTube, like, subscribe, and, uh, comment, and that kind of stuff, that would be awesome. Otherwise, that's what we've got time for, and this is Extreme Trains. Mm -hmm.